Goldman Sachs is a bunch of liars as they say their customers aren't interested in crypto. What are they, the only bank out there that doesn't want to taste some of that juicy ETF action? And one of you posed a great question, a great situation regarding XRP and Ripple stablecoin that I'm going to share with you. And ETF volume is up as GBTC is down with the halving only a mere 13 days away. I've got the Frank Thomas PSA score rookie card hanging out with us today. That's right, we're gonna do these splaying little slabs. User WC9 says, Crypto with Klaus, read this. Will do, if you post a good enough comment, I will gladly read it in the beginning of one of my videos. Why? Because that's why I do this. The viewer matters most, that's why your comments are at the beginning. The Ripple stablecoin, or any stablecoin issued on the XRP ledger, is competing for the same utility with the XRP native asset. They both take three seconds to settle and have the same transaction fees. XRP has a three second volatility risk and the stablecoin has a three second counterparty risk. Institutions will see both activities as low risk because they only have to hold the asset for three seconds for settlement, but would rather go with the stablecoin because of stability. XRP community, holders, and army. Nobody has given me good arguments why the stablecoin is not competing with XRP for the bridge edge for utility, nor how it will benefit XRP besides being paired with XRP and the automated market maker. I totally agree. This is going to benefit the stablecoin way more so than XRP. And in fact, this is going to benefit Ripple, the private shareholders, because Ripple, the company, is going to be making money on the shoes. Why? Because when you look at stablecoin volume, Tether's stablecoin volume, right? And that's the same market that they want to compete with. That's Ripple. Had a half a trillion dollars of volume in seven days. That's a lot of juice going to the issuers, isn't it? Having 13 days, seven hours away. Set for April 20, 420. Blaze up, my peeps. Bitcoin sitting at 68,480 ETH. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why does the heat map look funky? Because I wanted to share with everyone how the markets look for the last week okay this is for the last week and what i wanted to show you is overall the market is showing some softness so let's get back into it thinking that this is going to be a week and that goldman sachs is lying to us saying their clients are showing no interest in crypto they're so full of shit seriously bitcoin's in at 68 4 sold not at 200 but 177 is healthy i will have a video linked at the end regarding shenanigans with soul and it has to do with institutions again Retail buyers are getting screwed while institutions are getting the sweet deals. XRP sitting at 59.2, Aptos 13.16, Arbitum $1.48. Casper, I know I got a lot of fans in the audience bucking the trend over the last week. One of the few deeper in the green at 13.7. XLM melting faces. Well, if I could find it, the volume's so low. There she is. 12.8 down 10% in the last week. Melting faces, grown men are going to cry. I wonder how long they're going to keep that narrative up before they start thinking, hmm, probably shouldn't be saying this anymore. Goldman Sachs clients so no interest in cryptocurrency, according to their chief investment officer. This is total crap. How is it that Goldman Sachs, what, are all of their clients just anti-crypto or is it Goldman Sachs that's anti-crypto and not allowing their customers to get into it, considering like every other bank out there wants a piece of juicy action and I'm going to actually share lots of juicy action with you coming up in the next article. According to an interview with the Wall Street Journal, Sharman Mosarvar Rahmani, the chief investment officer with the bank's wealth management unit, further reinforced this perspective by stating that Goldman Sachs does not support investing in cryptocurrencies. Sharman then further stated that they're not believers in crypto and don't think it's an investment class. While other traditional finance competitors are venturing into the crypto industry to meet their clients' demands, this stance remains unchanged for Goldman Sachs. So how is it, though, that Goldman Sachs is like, no, our clients aren't into it? Oh, really? Because let me share some numbers with you. I, I think Goldman Sachs is full of shit. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Goldman Sachs is saying, yo, we're not into crypto. But then they're like buying the shit as much as they can. Would that surprise you at all? with Goldman Harry Sachs. All right, so Goldman Sachs, you say no one wants to get into crypto, your clients aren't into it? BlackRock's IBIT EFT has emerged as a front runner, recording a net inflow of nearly 308 million on a single day. Their total inflows, because you know, hey, no one wants to get into crypto, right? Goldman Sachs. Their total inflows for BlackRock is 14.77 billion. 
Hmm, that doesn't sound like people getting into it. Goldman's full of shit. What about Fidelity? Fidelity's ETF has a total inflow of $7.96 billion. Oh, 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 that's right. No one, no one's into it, right, Goldman Sachs? Let's keep going, because let's rub Goldman Sachs sack in the dirt. Bitwise's ETF also joins the ranks, recording a net inflow of $7.3 million in one day, or $1.66 billion, and that's Bitwise. That's a small ETF. No one wants to get into it? Come on, Goldman Sachs. This, this makes no sense at all. Here's what they continue on to say. The rule of law and systems of checks and balances matter. Well, then why did the SEC give the ETF a go? And why are there billions and billions? And I mean like billion, like many billions, like tens of billions getting into these ETFs. There is definitely a demand for it. And we've seen that overall Bitcoin compared to the rest of the crypto market is holding its value the best. In fact, Bitcoin isn't that far from all time highs. Look at the rest of the crypto market here. Who else is that close to all time highs? And yet Goldman Sachs is going to tell us that their clients aren't interested. No, I think there's some shenanigans going on here. Young Frank Thomas from 1990, what do you think, my guy? I Seriously, I, I think Goldman is full of crap. And, and what bothers me about the whole Goldman Sachs thing is, you know what, fine, you're going to lose out on it, and guess what? BlackRock will make the money. So will Bitwise, so will Fidelity, so will all the other players out there, except for Grayscale's GBTC, which is still seeing negative outflows. Why? Because they're charging too much for their damn product. Why would you pay one and a quarter to 1.5% a juice when you can get the same product and pay a quarter or have no fees a juice for a while? No wonder people are leaving GBTC from Grayscale. But they're flowing into the things that are way more affordable that put more money into people's pockets. So there's obviously a demand, a big demand. The ETFs have sparked one heck of a Bitcoin run, and yet Goldman is sitting here trying to tell us, nope, nope, it's not an investment class. Well, then why did the SEC approve it? Why hasn't the SEC gone after Bitcoin? Because it's agreed as it being a commodity. Digital gold is what people call it. So my belief here is that Goldman Sachs is playing both sides of the coin. They're telling you that, oh, Frank Thomas sucks, right? Frank Thomas sucks. But in the meantime, they're buying every Frank Thomas PSA 10 car driving up the price. They're making money both ways, man. And that's just shady. Now, in regards to the whole Ripple stablecoin versus XRP, viewer commenter had a really good point there. There's going to be less risk with the stablecoin. So if you have the option of XRP versus a stable coin and one of them is less risk, what do you think you're going to pick as an institution? The stable coin. That's quite obvious. Because then you can hold a heck of a lot of stable coins, not worry about price fluctuations, and be able to send transfers back and forth whenever you want, rather than trying to time it, swap the fiat over into XRP, and then make the move. Because XRP is more volatile than stable coins. It's not a knock on XRP, but you know XRP is definitely more volatile than stable coins. So institutions are obviously going to pick stable coins to transact their volume. Otherwise, they would have been doing it more with XRP now, which, and if they are, it's not helping the price, is it? So like I said, and like others are opening their eyes to seeing, this is definitely going to help out Ripple, the company, and the private shareholders. Because all these companies like Tether that did USDT, Circle that did USDC, they are raking in record, record profits. The companies are. And so will Ripple if they do the stable coin right. Right, Frank Thomas? Yeah, he agrees. All right, everyone. I did four workouts today. I am now going to enjoy myself some margaritas and some Mexican food. Yeah, I know, right? Work hard, play hard, knock some back. I'll catch you cool cats later as when I'm done with the margaritas, I'm going to be watching my White Sox probably lose yet again. See ya.